The new Ping i230 irons look like a huge hit for golfers here towards the end of 2022. And if you haven't seen it yet, go check out our string report video on that. Today, we're down here in sunny Arizona at Sun Ridge Canyon Golf Club working with Cool Clubs. They did their own testing with a robot on the i230 irons and found some awesome results. Over hundreds, if not thousands of golf shots. Let's go work with them and see what kind of data they found. Welcome back to Cool Club's headquarters here in Scottsdale. Um, today we are joined with our CEO and founder, Mark Timms, and we're lucky enough to have Drew Mahold here from Second Swing. Welcome. Yeah, it's been great to, to be here. Thank you guys for allowing uh, us to jump in here and see what you guys are all about, especially the robot testing. Got to go see that at Sunridge today. That was awesome to see. Uh, really cool to dive into the process of how you guys set up the testing and then uh, to watch you put that together and just to learn about your, you know, gathering all this information. It's uh, really cool as, you know, a club fitting company, uh, you know, and you guys are obviously doing a heck of that, a heck of a lot of that stuff too. It's, it's unreal. It's awesome. Yeah, it's kind of fun. We've been doing this for now a couple of years and, you know, it helps our fitters out, but you know, we want to help everyone, you know, these guys, your, mm -hmm. your customers and, yeah. and customers in general kind of determine what club's right for them. And, you know, the robot process is, is pretty tedious, right? Oh, you know, sure. we make sure, make sure everything's exactly right. And, you know, we get all that data and you saw it uh, at Sunridge, you know, we've got you know, thousands of swings right. and, and there's basically hundreds of swings on each club of each speed. Um, we take all that data and we kind of narrow it down. Dr. Tom Mace works for us. He's a professor of physics at Cal Poly, but uh, worked for R&D with Callaway and Cobra and been on Golf Digest advisory staff for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he takes all the numbers that we've got so far and uh, cleans them up and uh, kind of puts them down. And that's what we're looking at here. And he narrows them down to, you know, more interesting numbers that are simplified. And then we look and narrow that down further and try to make it simple for the average person and right. even the fitters to, you know, What's the difference between these two clubs? Right, because right. I think, you know, we're, I think all of us here are club geeks. And yeah. I think, you know, we we do our own comparisons of clubs, uh, like on our YouTube channel. But this is a little more scientific than, than we're yeah, used to. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and, you know, but, and, and, you know, there's a lot of, all the clubs are pretty good these days, too. Right. So, I mean, like for myself, you know, I, I look at this this data, you know, I can basically, uh, you know, if I think about myself, I hit the ball in the center and, and on the toe a lot. So uh, I actually look at those two positions only for right. which one's best for me. And you know, trying to decide between two clubs for me, you know, which one's better. It's hard, you know, mm -hmm. you don't swing exactly the same each time. So, you know, which one's actually better is, is hard to determine when it yeah. narrows down to a couple, you know, right. did you know, in a fitting, oh, you narrow yeah. down to two or three clubs, which one's right. They're all right. You right. Know? So, yeah. And it's a lot of it comes down, you know, we try to go to the golfers look and feel right. what they think, but then there's also to your point, the way that you guys are able to use the robot testing and, you know, analyze the performance off of, the, the toe or off the heel or low toe, you know, some of that stuff is, is awesome to add into the, yeah. the fitting and, and give another perspective though. So that's, that's really cool to see. And it's, it's awesome to have what, thousands yeah. of shots baked into this data. Right. I mean, and, and really what we use this for is to narrow it down. Right. So, I mean, everyone yeah. says we got, we got 20,000, 30,000, 50,000 combinations of demos on the wall. Well, that's, that sounds great. Yeah. You can't hit them all. Mm -hmm. um, so if we can narrow down what the best clubs for your kind of speed and tempo, you know, through the robot data and stuff and help you guys do that as well, you know, it just narrows down the fitting so you get more good swings on clubs that really make sense for the guy. Sure, sure. So the cool part today is, you know, recently released, right, the yep. Ping i230 here. So uh, kind of a, you know, a smaller club head compared to most irons uh, on the small side, a little bit more of a player's type. Uh, been on tour for a few months, it sounds like. So. Yep. Uh, what kind of testing have you guys completed with that, and what have you found out? Um, well, we've done a full full bulb test uh, at 80 miles an hour. You okay. know, we'll actually also do two other tests at 95 and probably 65, actually, okay. lower, but not probably on this club. Yeah, right. 65 miles an hour, no, that's not really <laughs> yeah. what that's for. Um, but, you know, we'll do more testing on that as well. But, you know, that's it. We really got uh, pretty good information on this one. It's tested out fantastic, and we'll show you some of the numbers. Uh, but, you know, you can see from this, it's really clean looking, you know, relatively small score lines, uh, not a lot of offset to it. You know, it's just a nice looking golf club. And, uh, you know, Ping always does a good job of right. performance-wise. You know, yeah, they're, yeah, they're they're always doing well. And they actually, yeah. it, it took them a long time to replace what they yeah. had in the I-210. That one was out for a long time. It's a great player's right. on. Kind of it's thing. in my bag right now. Yeah. And so right. that's why I'm particularly curious about the I-230 here because it is a candidate to go in my yeah, bag. Yeah, actually, that was long enough ago that we don't have robot data on that. So going <laughs> exactly, forward, we'll have yeah. all of them, but that was uh, right. last, more than last year. So Yeah, well, uh, so I, I think the cool thing here, too, is you have some yeah. information on similar clubs to right. I-230. and. You know, I think that's so, what I, you know, as, as the golf geek, right, dive into that. that yeah, stuff. so we can, we can look up on the screen here and stuff and compare a couple of similar clubs, right? So it would be in the Callaway Apex and the 790. These are all top-selling clubs, obviously, in mm -hmm. the category. 
Um, there's no right or wrong here. Um, you know, you look at, you know, carry distance, you know, um, you'd say, well, that's not great, but, you know. you got to take loft into account, right? You've exactly. Got a 790 is 26 and a half degree six sign, and this these guys are at 29 and a half. So right. it's almost a full club mm-hmm. weaker. So, yeah. so, you know, we don't really worry about that too much. Um, you know, more I'm interested in what we'll look at is the slots and stuff and uh, how far off center they are. Yeah. Um, to me, but you know, some people need distance or height, and obviously, some of these spin a little more and go a little further. Um, but they're all pretty good golf clubs. Mm-hmm. Well, if, you, um, if the, you're thinking about uh, the guy that's going to have this in your hand, like you said, it's not going to be the 65 mile an hour guy, no, nope. it's going to be a decent player who right. wants to launch it and spin it and stick it on a green. And you know, that's what it does. It's it's one of the highest spinning models out of those comparisons. Yeah, it's landing at one of the steepest angles, so you've got complete stopping power and control over right. that iron. Mm-hmm. You de- definitely do. Um, there's all well, the clubs in here, but they're longer. Um, but they're not going to stop as quickly. So, right. you, you know, there's trade-offs on everything, right? Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. It depends on who walks in the door that day. If right. you want the old guy that wants to just bomb it, you're like, okay, right. and then maybe let's try something different. Yeah. The thing <laughs> we always say is it's it's player dependent. That's We say that it seems like, you know, every video or every thing that comes up, you know, people ask, well, which, which club's better? You know, it's it depends on what you're looking for. It depends on what you need in your game. So yeah. that's yeah. where you kind of have this data, and there's different types of irons. you got maybe a – more distance oriented iron in like the P790, yeah, right? But then, it is uh, obviously it's you know yeah. stopping power not as good. So if right. you're a high ball hitter, that's a great golf club. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if mm-hmm. you're if you're a low ball hitter, maybe not. Right. right. So right. Um, the interesting thing as well, you've got like the forge clubs in there, and ping aren't traditionally forged, right. but mm-hmm. this new tech uh, with the kind of pocket in it and the um, the polymer in the back of yep. it, it kind of feels and sounds that way right. anyhow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've never really been big on whether it's forged or cast and stuff. I mean, in an iron and, or even in a wedge. Uh, the feel difference is, you know, it's something, but uh, performance-wise, it's not, you know, a huge difference. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think people have just been uh, brainwashed over the years of like, I've got to have forged, I've got to have forged, right. and it just yeah. it really doesn't equate to much in terms. Yeah, of performance. and you can make cast club actually softer than forged clubs if you want to. So yeah, there's yeah huh. soft stainless steels, and you know, you can make them really soft. So well, let's check out some of the dispersion. Yeah, graphs. let's take a look at those. Um, so if we just look at uh, kind of some of the dispersions, we'll look at uh, the ping one first, obviously, which you know, like I said, came out fantastic. These are kind of dispersion graphs we look at. Um, you know, these are all different spots we hit on it. You know, all spots in general, we kind of draw a circle around it. Um, the center shots, you'll see those are always extremely tight. I mean, you hit a robot and it's dead center. They right, go pretty right. much the same yeah. place. I mean, you, know, you set, set a card table out there at 160 right. yards and you're pretty much going to land on every time with no yeah. wind. So. And then obviously, you know, center heel is usually uh, a little shorter. And, and this is the one I look at, you know, um, mm-hmm. low center. Because I do hit it thin now and then. Um, Same. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, my, my miss is a thin shot, you yeah. know, uh, yeah, in the center there. or on the toe. You know, yeah. One of those three. Um, and then, uh, you know, low heel is horrible for every club. So, okay. um, you know, I really don't look at this. And when we do some of the analysis and our overall rating of the club, you know, we look at, you know, don't, don't wait all of these the same, right? So yeah. um, people generally hit it there, and it messes up all the averages. Right. So, uh, and obviously you get a shorter heel to toe club, too. It's a big disadvantage some extent but it's more playability some yeah. extent as well so you know that's that's the ping one there um some other ones similar and you can see you know total difference between you know the left the left to is right is great yeah. on this club. yeah i mean the centerless on this is fantastic yeah you know, which is really mm-hmm. one of the things we see but let's look at a couple other ones to compare them and see what they look like uh here is the titleist um you know a little more dispersion right to left um obviously this is scaling so it's not exactly yeah. correct this looks like there's maybe something wrong with the robot data, but we take the average. Obviously, it's not going to change it. Uh, but another good club, you know, pretty consistent. A mm-hmm. um, little bit right and left. Yeah. Um, off center. You got the TaylorMade here, which is, you know, longer by far, obviously. It's just, um, but, again, a pretty good right to left. Sure. Uh, again, that, that, that's that heel shot that's yeah. so bad, right? Right. And I'm over looking at the, 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 the center uh, uh, where it is on the toe. So. Mm-hmm. It's interesting uh, so how the one. different colors actually move around a little bit. Yeah, they do. You know? Yeah, in like general, they end the, up in the, the same the, spots. Yeah. But, um, you see, like, I think the low center shot here is further up than some yeah. of the other clubs for the for the P790 here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they've, got that, they've got pocket in the bottom, right? Yeah. Right. Kyle right. on, right. on the rail. Yeah. you got your Shrix on, which is a forge club. Um, you know, if you get throw this out again and, right. you know, average these in here, stuff, you know, it's still pretty tight. Um, you know, none of them are more than, like, five yards right to left, but, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and then uh, finally, we've got uh, the Callaway Apex, another one of the top slant clubs. You know, very similar. But uh, you can see the ping is, you know, as good as any of them and, right. and super good right to left. Right, yeah. But for a player's club, that's kind of what you want. Right. right. You really want to keep it straight. 
Uh, I'm gonna pull the thing back up again here. Yeah. Uh, and you know that's fantastic. So yeah, you know, really good golf club. Yeah. The scaling is just different. The, the scaling's all different. So yeah, worse, they don't. It, uh, it's yeah. it's, uh, it's that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a really good golf club. So yeah, that's. I was impressed. Yeah, and that's. I mean, this is again, this is some next level stuff that I think our the viewers that watch us and watch our testing like we haven't done this. You know, we haven't gone to the different locations on the face and been able to take the data like that. So to see that is is really cool, and I. It opens up so many doors, I'm sure, for you guys and yeah. fittings and we got some ideas com data. coming through to use yeah. this a little more effectively. But you know, if you're if you're out there and uh, we're going to start publishing this data in in some fashion for for the general public to mm -hmm. see, and you know where you strike it predominantly, you're going to be able to go into a right. shop and be like, okay, these are the two that I want to hit, yeah. right? And it's going to make w give you a much better chance than having no data. Right. You know, Ultimately, cool. it's going to allow fitters too to just have even more confidence in the club that they yeah. end up putting in a, yeah. a player's bag, right? So, uh, and looks the like... The tools the fitters have, right? The, the more they oh, can yeah. kind of figure out which one's the right one. It's difficult to narrow it down, you know? It's uh, yeah. it's one thing to do a fitting for Titleist only, and it's pretty easy to figure out which club you want. Right. But, uh, when you got six or seven brands that come into exactly. play, you know, it's, yep. it's hard to narrow those down. Yeah, and then it's even, you know, the, the player that might think going in, oh, I think I'm going to probably get fitted for Mizuno, or I'm going right. to get fit for TaylorMade in this, and then they end up hitting all the shots, getting the data, and they see that there's actually a model or two that's much better for them. Yeah, and so, that was happening now and then. Yeah, yeah. that happens. That happened to me a couple of years ago. So, right. But looks like, I mean, I, really good stuff here yeah. for I-230 yeah, in fantastic. comparison to these yeah. other models. It's definitely um, a club I'm going to give a shot. It, uh, yeah. it looks good to me. And, yeah. Well, it's the first time I've seen the data, and uh, I really like the look of that. And I kind of looked at some of the comparison data before we came in today just on what they were talking, Ping's release, press release on I-230 versus right. this, this I-210, and it's kind of... Um, They've changed the shape for what I think is a better for the mm. better player. They've slimmed out the top of the bag, yep. and the bottom right. of the bag still looks the same. Mm -hmm. So, definitely worth a look. Right. Yeah. I know. I will be looking at it for sure. And I mean, this this data is definitely helping me too. I, it's giving me a little more confidence. <laughs> now so you hey, really maybe, have to look yeah, at it. Maybe right? I yeah. really need to put <laughs> that this low in, heel but... shot's not so bad. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Thanks for coming out, guys. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed your time here. Appreciate you coming. coming yeah. Through. Thanks for having yeah. me. And this has been this has been awesome. So uh, kudos to you guys for uh, setting this all up. The robot testing. It's gonna be it's gonna be a huge uh, win for the golf industry as a whole. I think. Yeah. We're gonna we want uh, you know not just to keep it all to ourselves. We're gonna share it with everybody and hopefully uh, help. Everybody gets fit. Right? Awesome. That's that's great your to hear. Stores and our stores and everywhere. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you guys again for having me. This has been this has been fantastic. All right. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks See you again soon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cheers.